Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm here with Colin Eustace, General Manager of Barnes & Noble in Europe. Welcome Colin. Thank you. Morning Joanna. Morning, morning. So can you just outline what your role is at uh, Barnes & Noble? Sure. So my role, as you said, is the, uh, is the General Manager of the International Business for, uh, for Nook. So the small territory that I look after is everything outside of the US. Um, so, you know, we are, uh, we are, what, 14, 15 months into our Chew International expansion um, outside of the US, which means that we have um, a, a well-established presence now in the UK, both with devices, um, so our Nook um, e-readers and tablets, as well as our free reading apps that are available on uh, Windows 8, uh, iOS, and uh, the Android platform. And then we're also available in 32 other countries um, via the Windows platform, um, which is um, an app that's free uh, and readily available on, on the Windows 8 platform that you can shop through the whole Nook catalog, but you get then a personalized experience, which is, um, which is focused on local content. So if you're in France, for example, we have a, um, a hand-curated uh, French store within the, within the Nook um, within the Nook app, um, same for Italy, uh, Germany, and, and the other countries. Um, and as I say, the, the, the big focus for us initially has been has been the UK, but we're now we're now rolling out internationally. And obviously, we've just launched the Nook, the Nook Press platform now as well for um, for authors that are looking to self publish um, for for us to self publish uh, with us, which you know that's now available um, from the UK, but also in France, Germany, Spain. Italy, the Netherlands, and Belgium, and obviously any authors that publish on that platform within those countries also have the uh, their content available in the U.S. store as well. Fantastic, which is very exciting. Now, I'm particularly interested um, in the profile of a Nook reader because in the UK, and for people listening who are, don't live in the UK, um, the Nook is sold in what I would call more upmarket stores. Um, so I wondered um, whether you had any kind of sort of ideas on the demographic of people who read on Nook versus um, other devices? Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't actually speak for other devices. I think, that, you know, the Nook customer, um, obviously different to the US where we, where we have our own stores um, and we, we have a very good um, idea of who the customer, what the customer profile is. Um, you know, within the UK, we obviously have our, our channel partners of which, you know, we have John Lewis, we have Dixon's, we have Sainsbury's, we have Argos. So I think, you know, for me, I, I, I think at, if we take John Lewis out, which I think might be skewing your opinion somewhat, mm -hmm. um, you know, it is very much much a mass market appeal. I think we're well distributed. Um, we have traditional booksellers with Blackwells and Foils that, that, that carry the Nook product as well. So I think we, you know, we have a really good coverage in the UK of, of all of the customers that, that, that would want to come into Nook. And I think, you know, certainly from the content sales that we see, I think, you know, we've attracted very much a mainstream consumer. So, um, you know, the UK is a very price sensitive market, both for the device and also for content. It's very competitive as well. Um, so I would say that, you know, you know, crime and romance is, um, is a very, is a two very popular genres for, for us, as you would expect. Um, and I think, you know, within our merchandising, and hopefully you've had a chance to, to look through the site, and, and if you have a device, also the device which is merchandised as well, um, we do try and cater for all types of readers that, you know, that are both price sensitive, so we have lists that specifically cater to kind of under $2.99, um, we do monthly sales, we, you know, we have digital short, digital exclusives, um, you know, as well as trying to provide, I guess, you know, that literary angle as well, so Black Horse provide us with some uh, some insight into you know recommendations that we that we put up every every week um, to cater for for really every audience. But you know we don't I don't think we skew you know particularly literary versus YA versus crime romance you know than than really the rest of the market. I think it is pretty representative. Mm. And would that be the same in the US? So really, it's everything. Yeah, it is. I mean, obviously in the US we have a you know a big history through the Barnes and Noble stores of um, you know, being a destination, and, and clearly there is a there's a literary angle to that. But again, you know, the the market itself is is mainstream, right? So things that sell well on digital, um, sell well on digital on our platform as they do on others. So mm. you know, crime, romance, you know, young adult is is, is are clearly the areas that that 
that, that dominate the bestseller charts, as, as you would expect. Mm. Okay, and then sort of looking at the rest of Europe, because um, those of us who, who are indie authors, uh, I've just published in German, in, in German-speaking countries, um, and uh, like I'm looking at France, and the market for digital seems to be very small in France. So what do you think um, sort of Nook's reach is like in Europe, and can authors expect to be selling in some of these uh, European markets? Yeah, so I think the, the reach for Look in Europe is, um, is quite new for us. So we have just gone through some marketing launches in particularly France and Germany, which are actually happening now with Microsoft. So the, the market is, we're a new entrant, a new player um, on the Windows 8 platform in those markets. So it is growing and it's growing fast. So there's, there's a good engagement in the level of installs for, for the apps in both of those countries. And I think as we continue to, um, you know, to, to look at our platforms, you know, clearly it's on Windows at the moment. We are looking at the other platforms as well um, and partnerships with, uh, with other players in those countries that will make the Nook proposition um, certainly more viable. But I think it's early to say. I'm, I'm, glad, you've, um, I'm glad you've published in German. I'd, I'd be interested to see what that, what that does for you. But I think you know, the Nook brand um, and certainly the heritage of Barnes & Noble that we're bringing to that um, will certainly help us in the partnership with Microsoft because they're going out there and certainly promoting, you know, the Nook platform because we have a heritage and, and uh, uh, I guess some uh, some leadership in terms of book knowledge that we're looking to bring to those markets. You know, we are very focused, we're very specialised, we only sell books and magazines, we're not looking to sell anything other than that and obviously within that we have booksellers that are marketing those stores and, and merchandising those stores um, based on local markets. So for Germany, for example, we employ somebody in Luxembourg that purely focuses on just the German uh, merchandising store. Same for France, same for Italy, um, same for Spain. So, you know, we, we've given it as much focus as we possibly can. Um, they are all um, native speakers. They're, contact, they're in contact with the publishers um, and looking to drive the sales on, you know, in all of those countries. So I think, you know, it will certainly continue to grow. As I say, it's very, very early for us. Um, but the initial results are positive. Mm, no, fantastic. Now, you've mentioned merchandising a couple of times. Um, how would authors uh, get the attention of merchandisers? Um, and do you sort of like to hear from indie authors? Um, you know, because we a lot of us have, uh, I guess, relationship sort of things that happen. But um, I know a lot of indie authors would like to know how to sell more books on Nook. And it seems that merchandising is, is one of those ways. So it certainly is, and I think what I'll say is that from, from our point of view, Nook Press is very important. So I think anybody that publishes on Nook Press will be treated in the same way as any mainstream publisher. So if you know, we are here to sell, um, you know, the best content that we think our our customers and our readers will um, will will want to interact with and, and consume. So you know, we certainly don't treat it any differently to to we would a. Uh, you know, a, a book published by Penguin, for example. So where, where we are at the moment, certainly in the UK, where we've given it a little bit more focus, there are some marketing activities that we're, um, that we're testing in the UK first because it's probably the, the more established market of, of where we are internationally right now. <clears throat> so we have a thing called Digital First, um, where Nook Press will become part of that marketing communication. So we send out emails um, twice a week to our customer base, um, and some of the Nook Press titles will be featured within there. Um, we also have um, uh, some features that will just be dedicated to um, to Nook Press as well, um, of which we're we're working through at the moment. But there'll be an area on the site which will be merchandised, and also on the devices that will be merchandised. That primarily will focus on um, you know first on uh, first on Nook or uh, or digital first um, that, that will feature Nook Press titles. Right, and then, I mean, I, I advise people to publish directly if they can, but if people publish uh, through Smashwords or other um, middle distributors, yeah. I guess, are they treated in the same way? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay, no, that's brilliant. And in terms of um, any other tips for selling more books on Nook? Um, I think it, it's, it's a difficult one because I think it's the same as, as it is to sell any digital book, really, is that... You know, a lot of the the, the things are, are are very consistent across the whole uh, across the whole market. So I, I guess you know, an eye-catching cover um, that that really stands out as a thumbnail is is crucial. 
and having uh, having done this yourself, I'm sure you're aware. But you know that's how most people see the book um, on a device screen or on a on, on a computer screen in the first place. Um, also, email. So making sure that that you know that the, the cover title stands out when when it's um, served in an email as well. So I think you know, the the cover is really important. I think making sure that the correct category or categories are selected. You know, clearly make sure that it then surfaces in the places where you know people are looking for uh, for the genre that, that you're publishing. You know, I can't I can't kind of stress that enough that, that to, to make sure that it's in the right place. Um, I think pricing. You know, clearly is an important tool as well, and I think it shouldn't be underestimated that um, you know that pricing can be a, can be the difference between a, a you know a, a success um, or, or not. And I think you know there's multiple price bands um, where things generally tend to work. Um, and I think you know first in series is an, you know it is also an important tool. So if you are a you know relatively prolific author and you have a you know a series of books, you know something around. Getting people in uh, interested in the first uh, the first book of a series either with a discounted price, um, you know, that's really attractive that gets them in. Um, it is also a useful marketing tool. And I think the product detail page, I think particularly on the press, you're you're able to go back in and kind of play with the metadata or add to the metadata um, as and when you get a review um, uh, or you know even if the book's been out for a while, updating the product page. Um, allows people to search for, for for that for that book, or it appear to to, to appear in the in the search listings, um, as and when you you've got something different to say um, around that book. I think shouldn't shouldn't be underestimated as well. Mm, that's great, and I've certainly found uh, I jumped on Nook Press as soon as it opened in the UK and pulled my books off the other distributors, and I found that my sales at Nook went up, um, and I presume that was only from metadata because I was able to add much more granular metadata when I was doing it directly. So I think, um, that, as you say, that technical back end is so important. Yes. Yeah. Indeed, and it's one of the key things that you know we hopefully have made that very easy for people to you know to go in when they're creating their uh, when they're creating their, their titles and and make sure that metadata really does drive customers to be able to see their to see their titles because it, it contains all the relevant. It's relatively simple to you know to, to include all the all the right information um, that when people are searching it appears in as I say the right category, the right genre. I think it's really important. Mm, absolutely. Um, what well, I do have one sort of random question that just came to mind. In terms of um, uh, audiobook integration, is that something, um, for example, if people have um, audiobooks through another platform, <laughs> um, or they might be for sale on one of the, you know, the Microsoft other apps, are, are there ways that Nook will be linking audiobooks of that um, of the same book along with print and digital? So not at this stage. I think audiobooks is clearly another another area of the market, like self-published, that that he's um, that is new and and certainly very very interesting to us. So we we are working on some solutions, but nothing that we can kind of share at this stage. Yeah, no, sure. Um, and then reviews. I guess a lot of us find that the reviews on Nook are harder to get. Um, and I guess with I, with Amazon buying Goodreads, that makes it quite difficult. But what do you feel about the importance of reviews? So I think you know reviews are clearly um, uh, clearly a key part of um, of any book success, and I think it, it also allows you to. So I think one of the things that that you can do with reviews is, as I say, go back in and post that within the product page. So once reviews are there, you know you've received a review from a third party. Uh, um, you can you can add that back into the to the product description that allows then people that are looking at the book and might be interested to draw in by the cover or a, you know piece of marketing um, that then you know a snippet of the review or even the full review can be added to that product page. So I think it is important. Um, I mean clearly the if you if you will the, the more established book trade you know lives on lives and dies on reviews in, in some cases. So um, I think being able to add that to your product pages is is very important. And I think you know we've given you the the the, the, the authors a tool to do that with. Mm, I guess I mean more the customer reviews, the star ratings, and things like that. Oh, okay. I'm with you. I, I, I apologise. Um, okay. So yeah, again, you know that that certainly helps. Um, and I think anything as far as a review is concerned. You know, within the site is uh, is important. I think it's something that we're looking to 
you know, to evolve. Um, you know, obviously the, the the service you mentioned is not something we can use, but I think you know, individual review pages um, is something that we will be that we that we are certainly looking at. Mm. And then how about advertising? Because a lot of us find that uh, advertising with a site like BookBub, um, which has a very large email list, is generally the best way to, um, you know, to, to send up a spike of, of sales. And um, they do have Nook, some Nook links on as well. But do you have any advice around, um, you know, Nook specific advertising opportunities? So we don't offer any um, kind of paid advertising service. I, I guess is um, is where you're going here. But I think you know the, the third-party services that you've mentioned, such as um, such as BookBub, are are great links into that. And I think you know almost you know as a self-author, as you know, you become almost the you know the CEO of that title. So it's up to you to kind of you know market it in some way through these third-party services to drive them to the retail stores. Um, and I think at the moment we've seen, you know, the the, the best, you know, the, the best self-published authors are are using a number of tools such as BookBub. They're also using, you know, they're very active on on social networks um, as you are through Facebook, Twitter, um, that then link in towards the product pages of you know of the of the site itself. As I say, you know, fr- from our point of view, the merchandising and the way that we communicate in the press titles will continue to evolve. And I think in the UK. Um, you know the digital first program that that will run will be an important way, but it's not something that you know that we're looking to for, for authors to subsidise. It's more that you know we'll pick the best um, we'll, we'll pick the best read that we that we discover through that. And I think also there's going to be a you know a Nook um, you know Nook Press Present section on on the UK store as well that we'll be looking to drive. Um, and again, I think coming back to one of your earlier points, I think you asked about how you can contact us. I think there, there is the ability to contact us via email. So I think if you know if there's any authors out there that you know have submitted titles and they want you know particularly want us to feature it in the store or whatever, you know we're happy to receive emails on that as well and recommendations. And that email address is nookpress at nook dot com, um, which we're happy to then receive that in, and that can then be passed on to the merchandising teams. Um, that we have that, that would be able to influence that in, in their in their day to day roles. Mm, no, that's fantastic. Now, as a as a user of Nook Press, I what's been interesting because obviously I use all the other platforms as well. Is it's quite sensitive in terms of the EPUB formatting, and uh, which was quite interesting. I wondered if you had any other kind of um, you know things to watch out for when people publish on Nook Press, apart from obviously the categories and things that you mentioned. No, I mean to be honest, we we try to make the the, the site itself as, as easy and as simple to use as possible. So um, it, it's unfortunate that you seem to have encountered some some formatting issues. I mean, there are some you know the guidelines that, that are there and the help sections. I hope I hope are useful. Um, we do lay it out relatively um, you know clearly in terms of what what kind of things might cause an issue in terms of the formatting. Certainly when uploading from a Word document or, or whatever whatever service you're using. Um, and I can send you the, the links to, to all of that help and, and see if that's you know something that's of use there. But I think the help section on the website, there's also live chat available as well. And if anybody is encountering some difficulties as they're looking to publish, um, you know, there is a live chat function available um, specifically for Nook Press where you know someone's on hand to be able to, to, to guide you through the process. Mm, oh no, I, I'm definitely happy with it. I just, uh, it's, I mean, okay. sensitive. That's all. Not bad. Just sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It, it's interesting. I think you know that one of the issues of being an independent author is you have all these books and you upload them on all these platforms, and each one has its own little idiosyncrasies. Um, but it, it's certainly okay. an adventure, and I think that uh, what there are some really nice features of the site, like being able to go in and just update one small bit of the file as opposed to change the whole file, which is I think very useful. Right. For- for adding in links to other titles at the back of your book, that's a really good feature um, that would be nice yeah. if others had that. Um, but I, I also, I, I mean, it, it's great. You sound very positive about indies and self-publishing and the importance of Nook Press. Is is, is that is that true? Your, your Nook is excited no, it, about it? Absolutely is. I mean, for sure. I mean, Nook Press for for us, um, for Barnes and Noble as a, as a complete company, is is hugely important. It's you know, it's. Um, it's something that we think has uh, great value to us. I think it adds, 
uh, adds considerably to our catalogue. Um, and and clearly we can see from sales um, you know across the global markets that you know it's something that consumers want and I think it's a way of um, you know of indie authors um, you know to reach a, a great global platform and I think you know it's one of it's now you know as, as established as some of the you know as some of the mainstream publishers I think when you collate it together so I think it's you know, it's certainly something we are very committed to. I think you can see that in the way that we've, you know, expanded it outside of the US and as we grow internationally as well, I think you'll find that Nook Press gets, um, you know, gets as much attention um, within our business as, as any other publisher. Mm. And uh, obviously there have been some, mainly in the US, kind of articles about uh, negative things around potentially the growth of, of Nook. Um, but it sounds like you, you're talking about global expansion and, you know, things kind of moving on. So, you know, it's, what, what are you, I guess, what are the other things that are exciting you about the future? And can authors in other countries expect Nook? Absolutely. So I think, you know, Nook is, I mean, we are a global business. I think, you know, we have a partnership with Microsoft that will continue to grow. Um, we're continuing to look at other opportunities in terms of um, countries that uh, that we would look to expand in um, as well. And, you know, our, our catalogue now, from a global perspective, is, you know, it's over 3 million titles. There's, there's numerous, um, you know, quite a high percentage of that of that catalogue now is in non-English language. So we have a really good platform to, you know, to be a global brand and, you know, it takes time um, as we, as we know, and, and this market really outside of, um, you know, outside of the US um, and some of the key markets in Europe, you know, ebooks are still in their infancy. And I think that needs to be, you know, it's easy for us sat in either the UK or the US to, you know, to to underestimate the the, the market growth that, it, that is expected in, um, you know, not just emerging markets, but in big countries with, um, you know, with a with a strong English language base as well. Um, so we're looking at all these opportunities, and I think you'll find that you know the Nook brand will continue to uh, will continue to grow throughout the next few years uh, for sure. In in terms of you know as the market grows, um, we're looking to play a big part in that globally. Mm, I'm so glad you said that because this is one of the things I half on about all the time is, you know, we're just in the toddler years of, of this business and, you know, everybody. We really should, are. Yeah, we really are. And I mean, the growth of mobile in developing countries, for example, is just crazy. Um, I, I sold a book in Burkina Faso the other day and I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I mean, no, but I mean, you're exactly right. And I think, you know, this market is, is very easy to judge you know that it's that it's peaked when you know you're sat in the US because it's you know it's 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 a huge market but you know it's been around for a number of years in other countries it really hasn't started and as you say you know the route to market might be different so just because you know we you know we're used to reading on a tablet or a, or an e-reader in the US and the UK that doesn't mean that's the way it's going to be in the rest of the world and I think you know the the key thing for us is to have you know the the digital the digital catalog to be able to go and um, to be able to go and sell in those countries, and I think that's where we've spent you know a lot of time and a lot of effort in ensuring that we are you know one of the key players within that within that space. So, and I think Nook Press, you know, that will continue to to add to the to the title count, but also become a very important selling tool for us and a point of differentiation as we get into these emerging markets, and also to attract you know new authors in from, from those markets as they develop. Mm, brilliant. Well, that was so great to talk to you, Colin. It's really exciting to hear uh, about what Nook Press is up to. And I'm sure uh, all the authors listening are, are very thankful for your time. So, um, yes, thanks again.